Uh, I'm having a role of moderator today, so I will just shortly introduce uh, Chaba and Zoltan, and then um, maybe we'll somehow guide the discussion uh, if it's coming after the presentation. So I'm greeting everyone and thank you for joining us today. It's nice to see so many people interested and having time still during online communication every day. Um, okay, so uh, Chaba Hainochi uh, is a musician, composer, musicologist, and teacher at Mohenat University of Art and Design in Budapest, living and working in Budapest. He was the main initiator and organizer of the SES conference, uh, the first conference, which was established in SENS, um, which was in 2017. Uh, his recent artistic interest is field recording based composition and the use of spatial sound systems. Since 2013, he has given numerous talks and workshops in the field of acoustic ecology, including sound works in Hungary, Poland, Belgium, and Turkey. Chaba participated in the architecture and census in Plasse 2017 and in all following census events. Uh, Zoltan Miche graduated from the Franz Liszt Academy of Music as a professor of choral conducting and church music. He received his DLA in 2004. Currently, he is associate professor there at the Department of Church Music. He teaches Renaissance church music, choral conducting, and voice teaching practices. Since 2014, he has been the conductor of Schola Academica Choir. He sings and plays instruments in several early music and world music ensembles, composes music for contemporary dance performances and films. He teaches improvisation for music therapists at LT University. He organized different festivals and workshops to combine composed music and soundscape. Recently, he has, has established the music laboratory at the Uni Institute of Advanced Studies, Koshik, uh, with an interdisciplinary research, sound arts, touristic, and education agenda entitled Sound in City. Thank you, Polena. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for introducing us. And uh, we start this presentation about the Pauline monastery soundscape in uh, Hungary, which is actually the, so um, first we will share words with Zoltan. For the beginning, I will describe how I came to, to this, uh, uh, project, what is my uh, background, and uh, yes, uh, so it's it is strictly connected to my uh, uh, teaching and academic uh, practice. Uh, last year, I have started uh, a program at uh, Moholina University of Art and Design uh, considering sonic ecology, which means uh, optional courses, uh, working with uh, volunteer students in about 10 head groups. Uh, for a single semester. I'm looking for ways to combine theoretic and practical sides of the field. The first one a year ago was entitled Ecological Sound Design, and the other one, this, uh, the recent one, which we have started just two weeks ago, is a Echo Sound podcast. And uh, last autumn, I invited Zoltan Mijei to collaborate. The trigger of our planning is the fact that Vesprem, this regional center of west uh, of northwestern Hungary, is going to be uh, one of Europe's cultural capitals in the year 2023. And they have won the tender with the concept of emphasizing and speaking about the whole region. Uh, hence, 
the project idea of Transdanubia as a soundscape. Uh, it covers a number of starting points uh, related to urban and natural soundscapes. There really is a variety, but we had to choose a single theme that could be realized at the given time. So finally, we chose this monastery in Schalfeld. And the output, indeed, of this course uh, is a, a website, which uh, uh, which I will show soon. Uh, I will show soon. But now I'm giving uh, the word to Zoltan to describe his background to arrive to this project. Thank you, Choba. Just a comment: if if you wanted to share screen, we just didn't see it. So, oh, thank you. I, um, I wanted actually, but uh, I will find out why you didn't see. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so I'm now for me, it seems that I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, I do see. see it. Thank you. Because I, uh, first of all, I'm very thankful to be here with you. At the first time, I realized that this is a very friendly company, so it's good to be here. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the Google Maps, and I wanted to show uh, where I'm supposed to sit at the moment. But unfortunately, in our children's school, you know, you, you, the, the COVID just entered and, and all the children had to be uh, stayed home. So therefore, I just couldn't go to Kursk. This is the city, but this is an old picture of the, of the Google Map. But this is this is our library house. Now it has been renovated, so it's more nice. And I'm usually I'm sitting in the roof under the rooftop. There's there's a there are plenty of, of quiet space there where I can just do my work. And I should have been there because I have just finished a lecture at day. Uh, annual winter school which is run by the the unesco chair which is there at kursag at the institute actually this is the institute of advanced studies uh, at kursag so now it, there has been uh, an, an international uh, winter school is going on the title is how to be a citizen and I, I had a lecture about uh, urban soundscape and and so on so i wanted to show where where me and my ideas are coming from. So this is this is my my main playground. I would say this is the, the historical main square of the city. I will show soon where exactly Kurseg is, and and this building. This is my favorite. This is the city well. You 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 will hear it soon. Okay, uh, but just let let me show where where, where it is. Yeah. So this is Kurseg. Just on the border to Austria. This is the capital Budapest. So, so you, you can see that this is very well situated in, in Central European uh, wise, uh, because yes, it's even more close to Wien and Bratislava than to, to Budapest, the capital of Hungary, uh, and Linz and Graz. So it's, it's, it's very well situated. And before, before the political changes, uh, you know, it was a, a central place, so it, it was it was the capital of this region. Now it's it's a little bit remote, a little uh, jewel box on the on the on the border of, of Hungary. But therefore, this is this is a very fine place to have uh, an institute where you can research a lot on music. Well, Chaba was mentioning that there's a music lab, actually. At the moment, I'm the only musician there, though we had some scholarships and uh, researchers there, and we are about to build our own uh, institute, and we have built connections to other institutes uh, inside of Hungary. Uh, so in the following moments, I would like to, to show a little bit more what is going on in Kurseg in our institute. So, yes. Here we are in Kurseg. Uh, I named our institute Collegium Sonorum as the Collegium of 
you know, sonorum, you, usually uh, a musical group is called Collegium Musicum, but I change it to Collegium Sonorum because it means this is the Collegium for all who are dealing with sound or all who or what is sounding, sonorum is that. So uh, this is how I want to call my future institute in Kursen. Uh, this is uh, the main square, and this is a romantic, uh, huge church, ju just to demonstrate how big the community was there. This is a huge church. Uh, it equals to the biggest neo-Gothic church in Budapest. Uh, and what do we do there? First, we research the local musical heritage, because we want to revive it, want to uh, get it back into musical life. And fortunately, uh, we have a very good course with it. Uh, these, are, these are the scores which I found in the archives uh, in the church, for example. And we have local musicians now who, who research uh, and also play with the orchestra and choir this music. So I'm very pleased that this has started because the musical life of this city was very, very rich some hundred years ago, at least until the wars. So this is the first part. Uh, we are dealing with classical music research and we want to get them back into musical life. And yes, to be honest, we want to do it uh, sooner or later with all the other cities in or in out Hungary, uh, because there's a lot of things to do. The second thing is to deal and uh, especially play with uh, combining architecture and sound, or in other words, tangible and intangible uh, cultural heritage. Uh, this is a very, very basic idea, which I wanted to play with and I want, and, and, and I introduced this to students there, how to play music uh, when you see uh, a building of your own city. So this old building is the city archives and the method is so simple. I just start to read the facade of the building as a score from left to right. And it gives you, uh, ideas and hence what to set into music. Later you will hear uh, uh, an excerpt from this, you know, how to uh, uh, formulate into music an arch. If you just bend your pitch or if you just build an upward and downward melody and so on. So this is so basic, but this is uh, uh, what we started to do. And this is what we have done in the Paulin monastery ruins as well just being the first sound art example. Well, this is my, my favorite, the city well. And uh, this shows that how I set it to music, which is very mechanical. If the arch, there is a melody going up and down and so on and so on. Uh, there's a short video and I would like to just start, uh, I'm afraid, I have to check the share sound. Yes, there it is. This is a YouTube video. So I composed this music. First, just the soundscape of water pouring out. And then, you know this, this line line dot measurement this is very repetitive but very circular the columns like more static voices There are the arches coming and going. OK, 
Okay, uh, you can find it on, on, on YouTube later. I don't want to spend more time with this. Just to give an example, what we, are, we have started there. In the other hand, uh, we have started to organize musical festivals. Uh, it has been going on for five years, musical festival and, and music summer school, which is, uh, focuses on improvisation, uh, early music, improvisation in the church during the liturgy, and of course, soundscapes. So my favorite program is when we gather musicians in the afternoon and they and just tell them, you go there, you go there, uh, usually into hidden places, and just to start to play your instrument or start to sing. And the audience have to find the way by hearing where the next musician is. So this is just a, a little atmosphere. Yeah, so in the the square there's a jazz saxophone is. And this is like an actual DJ, how you mix the tracks, just going from A to B. So the jazz voice is faded away, and you find your way. Well, it is very simple, but, but very interesting thing to, to, to show you. The acoustics of the place where they are living in for two of this one. Map. Later at the evening, people come together and then they can look at the concert. We had the luck only one that very well done. Also do say so if, if you are not at Gurseg uh, at the time of our festival or in another time you can also have your private uh, sound walks so this is this is this is on YouTube if you go to Gurseg you just go to YouTube just uh, search for this playlist Gurseg sound walks sounding city sound walk and you find your way on the map and you start your journey while listening to your earphones and this is just an example how it, it goes. And this is focuses on that city archives house, which uh, we will see in first. Now you are at the arcaded house. It is a Baroque building. Yeah, is, built just like an ordinary audio guide with some Named and after the shape of its archway. And the music of this. Today it houses building. the city archives once the brass band of the city was stationed here. Soon you will hear the sound of this house. In the compositional process, I started to interpret the facade as a music score, read from left to right. Lines dividing the floors, held voices, split glass windows, polyphonic chords. Window layout at the facade rhythm and measurement the arches sliding melodies up and down <clears throat> yes and let's get back to to the the main star of the square because this is the fountain and in the last summer we have succeeded to install an interactive musical instrument uh, under the dome of it this is uh, like a metallophone. Uh, it's an electromechanical instrument which can be uh, uh, played via MIDI. And, and, and you can play uh, pre recorded material. Uh, and also, you can use it 
as an actual instrument if you attach, just attach a MIDI keyboard to it. So we had a jolly good time with this and, and it's still uh, providing music. So this is, this was just two weeks ago. And this is playing a local composer's music for, for the time after uh, or before uh, Easter. Just a short uh, excerpt from from the summer concert. That was uh, the guy uh, standing in the middle. He is the inventor, actually, of this instrument. He was a and will be a, a, a scholar there. Yes. So then, and he has a a jazz trio. This is my last attempt to open it. So this is a fine example how we can use it. You can find all this on on internet and YouTube, and I, I give the floor back to Chaba for a moment, and, and I will come back uh, in the church soon. Maybe I was a little bit long. Sorry, Chaba, we don't hear you. Yeah, thanks for telling. Uh, so uh, now I uh, uh, start the ruins of the Schalfurt Pauline Monastery as a soundscape. Can you see this website? Yes, yes. So in this uh, autumn semester, we decided to work on this uh, particular monastery. There are 17 runes in Western Hungary, in the Transdanubia, uh, from the Pauline um, uh, order in different, uh, they are all in different shapes. And this one is a, a, a ruin, but a, a ruin which shows a lot how it used to be. And uh, we built up a website uh, of of the soundscape of it, which is uh, of course a virtual soundscape. And we were concentrating on four uh, um, parts of the soundscape. First, the the church itself. The second thing is is the well. The third is the forest, and and the last one is sound art concerning. And uh, we will give a short introdu introduction to all four um, parts. And uh, Zoltan will speak about the church and, and uh, the church tradition of the monastery rune. Yes, it's no wonder because I'm the church musician and and yes, and the idea came from me. Uh, uh, yeah, this is about soundscape, but since we are at the Moholina University, 
We also have uh, uh, other artists, media artists, who with their photos, with their uh, graphics, uh, did their part as well. And before I turn to the music, I would like to show some graphics of, because that's an aim also uh, to, to, to start to reconstruct the ruins. Uh, sound wise and and uh, architectural wise so these uh first we had we have also only these but very interesting uh graphics how they were thinking about to just reconstruct even virtually these ruins i this is my favorite so yes uh the polin order this is the only one uh, Hungarian foundation. And, but this is a very central European uh, order. Uh, for example, the capital of the order now is in, in, uh, in Poland. And there's very strong in, in the Czech Republic and, and, uh, and even further. So, this, this was very important and very interesting to us to, to deal with this Hungarian uh, order. Uh, Sound-wise, what do we have here? Well, this is the same approach with the Kursag. We have to find the musical heritage of the Polin order. We have the luck that at least one late medieval manuscript is preserved, uh, and this is preserved in Zagreb, in Croatia. So, uh, we have the uh, we have the repertoire of the Paulins. Of course, later they also uh, also uh, published uh, music books. But for me, this is this is the source, the only the first source of, of the original music because that's the Hungarian way of singing Gregorian song as well. Okay, so there's the repertoire in this huge uh, book from Zagreb, which is uh, copied for the Paulin order. The second question is what to show in this in a special uh, place. Well, if you know to whom, to which saint is the church is dedicated to, that's the answer is easy because you have to find the music which was sung during the feasts of the saint because that was the main feast of the given church. So here we have Saint Mary Magdalene, uh, to whom is this church is dedicated to. So my task was so simple to find uh, in that Zagreb Codex, the music for that saint. What did we do? We had an excursion and we did some field recordings and uh, you can hear this. This is an autumn sound of nature. And this is some kind of a sound walk when someone, but that's me, going into the church and starts to sing to have an, an insight how it sounds today. So this is the distant sound from the church. Actually, this, this has also a very fine acoustics, even if it has no roof or windows. It's very suitable for outside concerts. Okay, it, it's worth uh, hearing by earphones. So this is the first attempt to show how it sounds today. We are about to organize uh, a concert, a soundscape concert there in, in early September. But we had our students here, of whom one made an architectural reproduction uh, with, with Everteams, that's, that's, a, that's a software used for gaming. Uh, and then, and, and, so this is the first attempt to reconstruct the original sound, the original acoustics. So it is like there is a sound, source of sound, me singing. 
the hearing point changes. That's how the sound is changing from your viewpoint. And the third attempt to reconstruct the music is a studio record of the selected songs, Gregorian chants for the Feast of Maria Magdalena. And uh, this is what I did. And this is where I want to involve my students at the church music department in the future after the pandemics. But at this time I made my solo singings. Uh, so you can find here, original Gregorian songs with uh, the ideal acoustics, which is, of course, virtual. And you can listen to four different songs. <laughs> You could, you could hear that this is a little bit clear sound with the artificial clear uh, reverb on it. Thank you, I, I give, give it back to Chaba now. I'm going on with the, with the well. Can you see this now? Yes, we see. Okay, this 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 is the first uh, uh, pic which I missed to send to you, but this is just the pre-story. So, and uh, I wanted to show you where Schalfeld actually is in the north of Lake Balaton, and uh, let's go back to the monastery itself. Uh, in the cloister, in the center of it, there is a well. And this is not by chance. Uh, considering the connection of water and the architecture of sanctuaries, I have a personal experience. In uh, Three years ago, I made a research trip to the Palestinian territories and Israel to address the natural and social ecology of water by soundscapes. It was for me a revelative experience, especially how holy waters belong to the holy land. And I don't just mean uh, the Sea of Galilee or River Jordan and the Dead Sea, but I mean all the cisterns and well, uh, wells which I saw there and uh, which um, I experienced. Uh, back to Schalford, the original name of this Poland monastery was Kökut, which means in English stone well. Also, not by chance, the symbolism of wells played a particularly important role in medieval monastic architecture. The spatial composition of the Pauline monastery in Schalford, like that of several other Pauline monasteries is organized around a well that can still be seen today, like in the ruins here. Uh, the monks could really rarely leave the monastery buildings, so the water supply for them was quite important. It had to be provided uh, within the walls. This is one point, but uh, there is more than that, because the structure is also considered a life-giving source. It's a vertical axis which connects the monks' everyday spaces with the sky. So it, it has a, a really strong uh, meaning, but at the same time we have to admit that the well in Schalfeld is uh, dead by now. It has no water anymore and it has lost its depth too. Uh, actually, it's full of 
almost full of soil. So we couldn't get or couldn't detect any representative sounds of its own. Uh, still, we didn't want to give up. Uh, we didn't want to give up uh, the representation of uh, uh, the well itself. This is why we decided to describe its relevance by help of other sacred wells and sources of water on the website. Uh, those who are interested can find texts and photographs on the website. And uh, as far as sound goes, I will show a short video featuring now, uh, uh, a short video now, which features uh, Jacob's biblical well, which is in the city of Nablus. Uh, the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate built the church and monastery of St. Photini in 1893. And this is the, in this uh, room, the ancient well can still be found. I show it right from the website. Now I jump to the forest. The Shalford Monastery is located in the middle of an approximately 100 acres strong natural forest. This uh, place is under the care of uh, Balaton Uplands National Park. Uh, visitors to the monastery will see a nature reserve sign at the edge of the forest. Uh, the forest itself is dominated by native oak species. The fauna does not differ from the typical fauna of Hungarian and neighboring forests. Uh, deer, stags, wild boars, and uh, and uh, well, actually these are 
the large mammals. Uh, foxes are the typical predators. Uh, typical rodents are dormice. And uh, three kinds of woodpeckers are common in the, in the older hollow uh, trees around the monastery ruin. And jays occur sometimes. Typical songbir songbirds are the blackbirds, golden orioles, and various tits. Actually, there is no surprise about the species other than the richness of uh, their songbird. I will demonstrate this by two sounds, which were a real surprise for me when I heard them for the first uh, time. The first is the dormouse. If you uh, uh, know what a dormouse is, uh, this is a compilation of uh, dormouse sounds and uh, it shows also um, they are th these, uh, the compilation is made of very different sounds from different situations and uh, this is a good uh, example for showing that animal sounds are really differing. You, you can't say you know the sounds of one species by knowing only uh, uh, one typical situation. Birds have, for instance, eight kinds of different uh, calls. So this is the, the no dormouse. Nagy pele. Okay, I haven't... Uh, I think my, my sound is not not uh, shared. I'm really sorry about it. I'm we, could just... see, we could hear it from through your yeah yeah speaker. it's it's, uh, it's not what I wanted to. So just a moment. So. Uh, First, I show a few pictures. Uh, this is the, the the neighborhood of of the monastery and and uh, the woods. And uh, here we have the dormouse. And the other sound which I will show is that of the longhorn beetle. And now I'm going to share the sounds. So this is the, the edible dormouse, which is a very, I don't like this name because uh, I would never eat a dormouse. Anyway, it's a dormouse, the big one, the great dormouse. Not pele.
So that was the Dormouse. And uh, now an insect, which is the longhorn beetle. I had no idea that these beetles sound at all, especially not how they sound. It's probably a kind of microsound, but uh, surprising. Hush, Zinzir. So, this is uh, Mihai Orszag, who, who was a, a sound collector, and recorder, and, and researcher. Uh, and uh, our original idea was to do the recordings ourselves, but uh, it quite soon came out that it's... it's uh, not realistic, especially not in COVID times. There was a curfew and so on, but uh, by there were other several uh, problems too. So we were very lucky to meet this archive and uh, get permission to use it. Uh, Mihai Orsag has a, a really big recording of specialist birds, but also all other wild living animals uh, from Hungary, it's it's about uh, uh, it's a really huge uh, collection, many 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 CDs. A small part of it is released uh, on various lab labels, but the rest is not. And we we got this possibility to work on uh, work with these uh, sound files. So that's what I wanted to show about the wood. And the last chapter is uh, going back to, to the sound art. Uh, and it's Zoltan's work to speak about it. Thank you. So, so if all the chapters of this web page are introductory, I think the most introductory and the most open window is the sound art window uh, because yes, we are just ahead. This is for the future that uh, we would like to ask more sound artists, even you in this room, to, to collect more ideas and, and to, to give it or bring it to here. Yes, we are aiming to, to build it as a bigger program, like uh, a tourist program, like a mobile application or web-based application, which can be used. Uh, I was there uh, last week because the Vesprim uh, television wanted to have an interview. And I just realized that there's a very strong, uh, uh, what is that? Not Wi-Fi, but, so you, you can reach internet very well at the ruins. So it, it's good for the future. What is there here at the sound art? That's the good old example of mine, how to make a building architecture, a sound or a music. So in the picture you may, what you see, this is the, again, my playground. I tried to make this uh, inner facade to have a, to build up a music called piece. As you can see, this is a very less uh, structured material, rural and almost nothing to there, uh, just startings of these arcs, windows, some, some door openings here. And I had the idea that what if, if I try to approach this 
uh, wall as I would imagine how to represent all the songs which were sung uh, in between these walls. Uh, I had the idea that maybe these songs, the, the sound could just get into the walls and then they're still there, somehow resonating. So I took uh, a, a recording of a Gregorian song of a choir, which I was a member for long, many long years. This is the Scola Hungarica, the Gregorian choir. Uh, was there in Hungary and produced more than 60 records. Uh, and I used a recording from this choir, from the Poland repertoire. And I, I put this to be the basis of this sound installation or, or sound file uh, with the idea that maybe this is how I, I imagine how it would sound. So this is made, as you can see here, the map of, of this, this uh, music. This is the basis, the walls. And there you can see, this is, this is very mechanical, but this is just a game starter from, from me, how these arch openings, how the cross, how the windows is. These are sounds in, yeah, this, is, this is the, the DAW logic. So uh, I would like to finish this. Uh, from a from an expert from this music, which yes starts with the nature sound. So this is where we are now. Uh, Chaba, would you like to add some more about the future? So I, I told some something now, but maybe you can tell more about this. Sure. Uh, I consider this project as an open uh, one. And it's uh, kind of starting things, but... Um, Actually, all, all windows are uh, uh, capable for, for uh, making them larger and, and put more material to it. For instance, the, the forest. It's really good that we have found uh, Mihai Orsak's collection, 
but for me it's not uh, the real representation of nature yet because uh, nature has a rhythm it has a, a daily it has a, a yearly uh, rhythm and for me an optimal sound map so to say would contain all those possible sounds so i'm looking for possibilities to extend this collection by these factors also for uh, as far as as the sound art is uh, um, uh, considered my my idea is to to make it uh, open make it um, interactive make it usable for artists and researchers at the moment you can't download animal sounds even because it's it wasn't uh, considered when we set up the website but uh, i think it would be a good idea to give the possibility to for people who are interested uh, to do new works with these really interesting sounds i didn't show you now let's say the fox we know what a fox is we know it from uh, various sources but those fox sounds which you have which we have on the website they they can surprise you they surprised me anyway and and uh, also real time recordings are possible uh, at their gatherings and, and masses and other kinds of social events in uh, at, at the ruins in the summer for instance and uh, we are going to record and those records can be used like basis of uh, soundscape composition and uh, i think it could be a real good possibility to uh, to work together on it because different people different artists coming from different places from around the whole world actually maybe why not would would work uh, in different ways and uh, very good pieces could could uh, be created from sounds recorded at this space so this is my perspective and i'm yeah questions please anyway and we are um there is one point that um we have quite uh, um fr from from the general public we have good responses in in hungary but there is no nothing from professional from professionals for from from people who who work with soundscapes who are in this kind of of thinking and so on so I, i'm i'm really interested in your uh, reactions and advice so i pass now the word back Polena. Yeah, thank you very much, Sultan and Chaba, for your presentation. It was great to find more, more about it. Uh, I just wanted to say a bit uh, considering the lecture series first, and then maybe we can uh, continue with the questions. I just wanted to say that uh, this is the first one uh guided by, by sense members and uh, the plan is to have uh, the lectures and this in this form of meetings uh, with speakers every month and uh, the plan for now to have it uh, on the same date so every month on the 22nd you can expect uh, more lectures coming uh, and yeah i hope it will have some regularity and yeah, uh, I actually have several questions uh, to your to work that you presented. Uh, maybe some of them are more technical, I would say. Um, and I also wanted to ask you to share the links, maybe to Slavic, to, to the website is easy to find, but I think it also will be necessary or like fine to have it. Uh, on the website of Sans, maybe, or on Facebook uh, at the event, so people can find more information. Also, on the projects that you talked about before, um, yeah, sure. projects that you presented. For the first step, I will share the address of the website in yeah. the chat right now. Yeah. And um, actually, when I read about this 
topic about sound and uh, architecture. I thought about uh, a bit of a different interpretation of this. I thought about working with the resonance of uh, specific places, uh, but not um, using them as a kind of like visual partiture score, which is also a nice thing that, uh, yeah, I guess it's not much often to use uh, the visual part of buildings like this. So just wanted to share that this idea came to my mind first, like, yeah. And I also wanted to ask about the uh, the projects of one of the students that you mentioned who uh, built the church in 3D uh, and uh, somehow like simulated the acoustics of it. Um, yeah. I, I was just interested in, in the way the students like they how they did it or the one person I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, he's a, a media design student. And the original idea was to use uh, some kind of um, architectural um, um, simulation um, program for acoustics. There are, uh, there are a few, but actually we couldn't uh, get close to them because uh, the, there is a Swedish uh, one which is they are just really very expensive and uh, they can't be cracked and uh, uh, so we, we decided to find other ways and uh, and this is a this is a a, um, a game engine it, it's in it's in a game the one which uh, the student used and uh, a group of students, I mean, a couple of students worked on it. Uh, they, first, they had to reconstruct the how the walls, I mean, the, the physical um, uh, capacities or physical uh, circumstances of the of the church building in the in the original form, and this program makes it possible with some changings to put the inside the, the sound inside of it for me it was already a big uh, actually a surprise when we first came there uh, gregorian chant for me uh, is addressed to big reverberation um, so how I, if if you listen to to gregorian chant recordings or you go to churches where gregorian uh, recitals are heard, then most of the time you will find long reverbs, which are typical for, let's say, big cathedrals in France, uh, or uh, even in Budapest, we have the, the Matthias Church. But this small, this is not the only way how Gregorian chant lived, because I guess that, that most of small churches in villages were not of that size, uh, so it's uh, it's not uh, definitely an ear come. Uh, uh, I mean, you can read about big reverberation as an ear con for Gregorian chant, and I found out that actually it's not it's not necessary because uh, many churches were just just not of that size. Um, yeah, from the technical point, I uh, uh, there is a short um, description on the website uh, given by Bence Chontos, the guy who did it. You are welcome to read it. And if there are, if there are further uh, direct questions, then um, uh, of course uh, we will moderate them. Actually, you even might remember Bence because he was in Ustina Blaben with us. Uh, he was one of the uh, one of the Hungarian students at that conference. Okay, thank you for answering. And uh, other question that came to my mind during your presentation was uh, regarding this uh, MIDI instrument that was put in this fountain. Um, uh, 
when it was the situation when the instrument was installed there and it was controlled somehow, I mean, like when the person wasn't playing it, but when it was uh, there like by itself, uh, was there any reactions from public on it or how, how it was accepted? I mean, in general, this, this approach, this project. Yeah, they, they liked it very much. And the, the most surprising thing was that there was an announcement that there will be a new musical instrument will be installed there. And there was just one, one sentence in the announcement that and in the future, it said, it will be more interactive. What happened? People came there and they treated this to be already interactive. So it, they went under the dome. Of course, it doesn't play music all the time. In given hours, it plays music now. But they went there and, and started to wave their hand, started to jump, to, to ask the, the machine to, to respond. So I think it, it, it's a very interesting challenge that uh, today people are, are thirsty for, for interactiveness. So that was, that, that was the, the first, the, the very, <laughs> very most interesting reaction. Of course, they like it and they liked very much, there was at least uh, uh, three concerts there during the summer, this jazz concert and the other with the, the string ensemble, uh, you know, the Mozart aria of, of Papageno, which evokes the, the clarion song. So that was performed there. So um, this is a very, very, very popular instrument there. And we installed uh, Christmas music during Christmas, Christmas time. There will be a very slight change where for the actual hour and minute of the sunset, day by day it changes, but that would be a musical sign to sign the actual sunset. And and then they, they like it very much to <laughs> to get to know when the sunset is uh, sound art wise. So um, yes, and, and fortunately it's working. So we've been through the hot summer times, we've been through the coldest winter times and it's just working there. Uh, there's the computer in, in, in the nearest uh, building and it has a radio connection which transmits the MIDI sign to the instrument which is which is 20 by 7 is on and it's working so uh, yeah we are very proud of this and we're very happy with this and we are seeking for for new innovations and new uh, installations to attach. Thank you for your answer. I think Miloš uh, has uh, wants to ask something. Yeah, hello, Zoltan Chaba. I have a question. So, can you maybe repeat one more? Uh, how do you see the possibility to develop this idea um, for like making the entire space somehow uh, augmented with sound or I didn't I didn't completely understood uh, your like say vision um, yeah you, yeah my my vision with the with the website is to to develop a kind of a playground out of it to make it uh, um, able to well on the first step just download sounds from it and put back and uh, even uh, i can imagine online events with uh, um, with, with common uh, compositions like um, i i don't think this is very easy it uh, so this is really just letting my fantasies to go to to, to go out but there is this uh, um common composing almost real-time software, which I can't remember the name of it. You can send files to each other and you can listen to it, uh, uh, not real-time, but quite immediately. Uh, does anybody uh, mean what which, which software I'm thinking of? In, in the first period of the pandemic, I was using it with, with some friends. Anyway, it's, it's technically it's possible and there are even better real-time softwares now that you can you can uh, uh, organize an event 
with the various people to compose on the basis of the soundscape uh, from, from the place. But uh, don't ask me how this can technically be solved. This is, just, this is an idea which, I, which is in my head and uh, I think uh, I will go for it. Well, there is a simple, simple solution if you want to have kind of interactive uh, online uh, composition can be uploaded for miniatures for uh, Apori Org. And if there is a, <clears throat> a good uh, connection, you can walk around and listen to the sounds which are uh, specific, uh, located to this place in a diameter of about five meters. So you can make very specific composition uh, and people can listen it to their, uh, on their mobiles. So it is technically, okay. it's, it's very simple. It's okay, called mi it miniatures for, the, for Apori mobile. Okay, thanks, I will check it out. And otherwise, is this, is this an sorry, is this an application which I don't know that you are mentioning on mobile or I didn't get it? Right a well. website which is called apori.org, and there is a special uh, app for as part of the website which is called Miniatures for Mobiles, and it's existed mm -hmm. about uh, seven or eight years already. And it's yeah, open source, you don't have to, you just ask the operator to give you this permission to use it and then you put your own uh, composition online. Yes. Can you just share the link here in the chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure what to type in. Thank you. Yeah, I see here a question uh, regarding the Longhorn Beetle, how it was recorded. Um, from very close. I I don't know the technical circumstances. I have no idea about Mike. Mm, but uh, if you listen uh, several times, then it's it's clear that it's not only this kind of singing or a little bit cricket-like voice, but you can also hear clicks on, on the wood or on some surface where the beetle is. So it, it touches the ground. Uh, regularly, and and it's you you definitely can hear it from very close. But I don't know what what Mike uh, uh, it was. Yes, I was thinking that it's so close that it sounds almost synthetic. Because there's no, uh, yeah, just very close. So it it, yeah. it it sounded synthetic to me. I, in, not in a bad way, just it felt that way because of um, no distance, no acoustics, which of course can be added, but I, I was thinking about it too, that's what I mean. What I know about Mihai Orsak's recordings, that that he was, um, finally he was not a sound person. He was a veterinary and was really enthusiastic for, for uh, animals and animal sounds. Um, and uh, from time to time he so so he had he he had just a, a small um, collection of, of mics and it's probably easy to find out what but the problem is which is very very sad that I had a a friend who was sort of his assistant for a decade or so and I just got the material from this friend of, of mine in November 
and uh, in December he passed away with COVID. So he just uh, sent me, uh, my friend sent me the material, and I downloaded it, started to listen, and then I just can't uh, ask him anymore anything, so, which is which is very um, one. Of, it's it's one of the the big COVID losses. Um, so probably there are other people who who know uh, details about these recordings, but I haven't found them yet. Uh, what is what does Echoes do? It's, it's, it's actually the same. It's uh, just uh, you know another app. And it's also have... inside Epoly. No, it's no, it's not about Epoly at all. It's it's simple. It's just an app, and uh, you can use it as for free as well. And it's just another possibility. I mean, you you you. You can use it, uh, uh, you know, you, you don't use like a map, like when the files are stored. So it's more, there's a different system behind it. I'm not sure. I don't know why, but there's one Norwegian in some classes who always use it. So we used it once and it was very simple. Mm -hmm. But maybe Epoly is better that it's bigger community behind it, you know. It's like, yeah. a, a nice, like you know, there's a huge collection of sounds. Of thousands of sounds amazing so this this echoes is just not you use like for this location sound but there's no connection with other communities you know, database of sound or something like that. you can find there like many examples of different projects which people did with miniatures for mobiles so it is kind of a very good didactic uh, tool you can make your own kind of radio play with it. Uh, this is like stage design. You can work it as a well, approach as a as kind of database of locations uh, uh, with specific sounds. Yeah. No. Yeah, hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't hear you. Yes, Sorry. Uh, I got a one question for the for the MIDI notation. You work randomly, strictly graphically or musically? I know you, you can draw with the MIDI or anything. And what was the approach? If you were well was a little bit limited to the tonality or something, or it was strictly graphic and uh, the outcome was really nice. Um, I'm just a little interested about it. The approach was, was toner, because I, I believe that if you want to uh, add something which is new for the public, even in a small city, I got into fights, really, that I wanted to show them more experimental music. And, and, it, and it turned out that they were, wow, threatened by, by more experimental music. So I learned from that. And, 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 and yes, uh, and I learned that uh, for a start, for a more tonal approach is the more successful. Uh, and, and yes, uh, well, it, it, it looks like a drawing, but I, I, this, is, this is a tonal. I, I play the music in the shape uh, of those objects. <clears throat> and I choose the, the tonal system, and I choose the, uh, the sound, sound of the voices. Uh, but yes, I think uh, new, new methods can be invented. Uh, the guy, Valtzi Dania, who is the inventor of the, the musical world, has a system where uh, the 12 directions of the clock 
which equals to the 12 directions of the uh, sorry, I'm tired. North, east, west, south. Compass. Compass, yes. Represent the 12 terms. And, and he has built a, a, an app, beta version, that you draw your way on the map and it gives you the, the music of your way. So if you, if you put it into a, a mobile application, uh, you can generate a 12 turn melody, system melody of your walking in the city. And when you, ent when, and you get back to the main square, you just upload this to the city well, and the city well will play what you have uh, walked. And the city well can uh, add harmony. Artificial inter intelligence can do this already. The, the city well can make it into any style. This is what we are dreaming of in the future, to make it more experimental, more more, uh, yeah, more brave, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Marta Michalska wanted to ask a question. Hi, hello everybody. Uh, I am a guest listener here, so I was very uh, interested to hear about your project and about your presentation, uh, which I will definitely explore uh, later, but I have one um, very basic uh, question about your project. Uh, maybe it stems from the fact that I am myself a sound historian, so I have this historical uh, perspective, but I was wondering how do you position your whole project between the preservation and the reconstruction? Because uh, I understand the preservation of this site, of this monastery, as uh, uh, trying to keep it, uh, the remains, trying to keep them as much as possible in the current shape and uh, preventing from um, deterioration. And the reconstruction of the soundscape or the construction of the soundscape as something we imagine right now, I don't know, uh, 600 or 700 years uh, after that. So how do you position yourself between these two, I don't know if we can call them extremes or the opposites, but how on the spectrum, how do you position this project? Thank you. I would uh, say both are uh... Uh, challenges for us and we would go for uh, also preservation is uh, important which we represent by the Gregorian chants and actually also the animal sounds which are the uh, the sounds which which belong to to the past and in a way to, to the present because animals these animals live there still but it's it's the natural state of of uh, of their word their sound word uh, same time it's um, for me it's a challenge to to build sound art from from these elements and uh, this is what you can call uh, reconstruction to do something virtual and um, art pieces are uh, some, something which, which has also already begun, but I think there is uh, um, a lot of room for it in the future. So about the balance, it's, um, um, I don't want to say something like 50-50 person because it doesn't make a sense, but I, I would say definitely that both are, uh, I, I'm inspired by, by both fields. What do you think, Zoltan? Me too. Uh, yes, we were also thinking about the historical sound reconstruction because I know a lot of what, what's going on in the world. Uh, many of them, I'm not uh, quite uh, all right with that to reconstruct a medieval sound of a city because what came out is just a mere sound of a dog with a smith's hammer 
and uh, yes. Uh, but I would be very interesting. Uh, and I think it's not, uh, maybe it's better to combine preservation and, uh, and innovation and construction, uh, because I don't think it, it would be very interesting to reproduce the, the medieval sound. But if, you, if, if we just have an approach that we are interested in, in the, the old sound, but we are now and we are innovators, we are musicians, maybe, uh, you know, th these, this can be just, just like intermingle in, in the middle. That, uh, yes, Chaba, I, I agree with that, with you that all things are interesting, but I think we should uh, better to combine them because we are living now and we, yeah, we have ideas. I think it's more interesting to, 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 to look in the future in the crea creative way. In, in the, like at, at the beginning of the project, we were really considering to, to reshape original sounds, the social sounds of, of the monastery. But uh, um, we, we couldn't come to... Um, it, 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 it's, it's not so... Um, well, of course, you can say it's not so easy to do, but, but at the same time, it's also not so much inspiring. There, there is one thing I, I would like to, to do in the future. Uh, there was a winery in, in, the, in the monastery. They had some wine, uh, uh, vineyards in the neighborhood and the monks were producing wine. In, and uh, I would like to reproduce the sounds of, of, uh, of, of the grapes becoming wine. There is this word, which I don't know in English, which is when, 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 when the wine starts to be processed. I think it's... Fermentate. It fermentates. Fermentation, yeah. Sounds of fermentation would really interest me. But it's... Um, actually, why does it interest me? Not so much because of the past. It, it interests me because I'm interested in that sound right now. And I'm not sure it brings us really closer to the Middle Ages, but it's an interesting sound which uh, is connected with the place itself. If you uh, see what I mean. So it's not really uh, nostalgia or looking back and, and making something historically very... Um, um, how you say hitelesh? Hungarians, please help me. Uh, so uh, maybe like historically informed, like the musical performance. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think that that uh, it's uh, just because of the sounds. It has to be uh, historically. Um, um, Exact. Authentic? Authentic, yeah, this is the word, thank you. So, so uh, uh, I, I'm more interested in, in the sounds of fermentation than in the authentic, authenticity of, um, uh, of, of a winery in, in the uh, 15th century. Chaba, uh, if you are interested of sounds of fermentation, yeah. At the last conference, if you remember, Tomáš Šenkířík got the sound soundscape and sounds of fermentation of Slivovitz, of the pla plums, it's plums. Yes. The fermentation and he got some experiences with recording it with. Uh, Hydrophones and uh, yeah, shotguns, yeah. and it, it it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think it's then uh, it's that when my interest started growing, and then when I learned uh, that there was a winery, I thought that that could be done. But actually, it was we were just after the wine season when we started recording. So <laughs> in November there was no um, fermentation of the vines anymore. We have to wait till next year. That justifies a field trip. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, a field trip to the vineyards. That sounds great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Only for some purposes, of course. <clears throat> you said that you are open to some suggestions of uh further work and at this place uh is there any way how will you communicate it somehow to the people who are interested maybe who are not now here but uh, some open public on the 24th of july there will be the the yearly big mass and meeting of uh, maria magdalena and uh, I'm really, um, I'm going there to record, to do field recordings from all kinds of uh, listening points. And anyone else who is interested in, 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 in the place and this project is welcome to join in the recording. I'm sure we would record uh, from different ear points. And if we do works out of it, then, I mean, the more ears listen, the better re the results uh, are supposed to be. It also and, came and... to... Oh, sorry. No, just go on. Uh, it also came to my mind that uh, maybe it will be interesting to take part in the sound tent uh, or maybe in this uh, down chorus day to stream from so, there yeah it's uh it came to my mind but uh for the for the down course they they are already actually already quite a lot of of different approaches so yeah Sharfield can be one but um there are also other places which it it really depends on covid how far we can go from budapest but it's actually it's it's also maybe it's it's better to work there and record and and uh, put the results into this um, bucket. It it has a um, a, a bird. Zoltan was there last week and he said that there are plenty of birds. When we were there in October birds were not so much uh, around. We heard bird sounds, but it wasn't really um, all over the place. And uh, last week, Zotan, you said that there was much, much more bird sound. Uh, it was very interesting because I was expecting no bird sound at all. But we arrived just before noon and it was just uh, amazingly big noise of birds. And Interestingly, we did our interview, and after a half an hour, just they just gone. Total silence. I don't know the reason of it, but it was very interesting. Uh, that was the si silence which I was expecting in the late February uh, forest. But but interestingly, when we arrived, it was a full sound of every bird from every tree. Amazing. Uh, back to the, the future, uh, there are plans to cooperate between the two institutes, like the, the Institute of Chaba and the Institute of Mine in Kursag. So maybe I'm, I'm optimistic that maybe uh, a further uh, cooperation, more uh, students to be involved can be achieved through this. And uh, if you want to go to Scharfer, that, that will be this June, but we have an invitation by the Hungarian Arts Sakra, the Sacred Arts Festival, which is a, <clears throat> a whole country festival for sacred arts, and they want to want us to have an outside, I think that, that will be more than a concert in Scharfer, and I think that's the second weekend of Feb uh, September. We have to organize this, but I think that will be our first self-organized event there, if we succeed. But we have the possibility to, to do this, the framework of this festival.
maybe it can also be shared uh, somehow to the sense network yes of course Just keep it in mind I also was thinking when you were talking about the bird sounds like there are birds coming now already. I just thought that uh, if there is any information on uh, this in archives, I mean like in text forms or like in written form, how it, was it sounding uh, before the recording was possible or is it is it is it uh, at least uh, is it in general possible to find some information like this around the place? Uh, you mean about the the individual sound files of of the uh, sound collection, animal sound collection? I mean, in general, some uh, descriptions of soundings of uh, of of landscape sounds. Not only of landscape visuals, but of uh, sounds uh, in the forest or you sounds mean, of you mean, you mean historical? Yeah. I mean, pre-recording. Uh, yeah. But that, that's an interesting point. In, in, in Kurseg, uh, I also started an initiative that we should check historical uh, text uh, sound-wise. What do they tell about sound? Because I think uh, many information can can come out from that. So I, I just just examined one one uh, historical text uh, regarding the battles of Kurseg with the, with the Ottoman Empire. <clears throat> and yes, many many annotations to sound how the war cries, how the pipers, how the children, how the elders, how the you know the sounding. So I think that, that I think that's again a very interesting field in the historical uh, soundscape studies to read about the sound of the past and uh, if i can actually it was the lecture in plassi and in the discussion uh, was the topic in old Greece was the system how to wrote the bird sounds. And it, it's circa uh, 3000 years, not, not 3000, two and a half years ago, uh, we have the system for the, not notation, but uh, how to write this, how to write the sounds of the birds. And if you will ask the, I forgot the name, Milos will, will got the name, the bird recorder, the specialist, he will know. But it is quite old to, to not record it, but got, got the sounds of the birds. I, uh... Would be nice to, to get closer to this. I think I remember that that paper was it in Czech? Yeah, actually, it was in Czech. It was yeah. uh, in collaboration with Stanislav Abraham, and the name of the recorder was. Oh, sorry, I, I I don't get it. Yeah, uh, no. yeah, but but what he played, it was uh, it was in bird bird song. Yeah, it was quite interesting. It was actually, I think Milos translated it partly to English. Yeah, is it? Uh... It's Vit Zavadil who was uh, presenting. Yes. Was, yeah. Is there maybe any more questions from anyone who didn't participate before? <laughs> or any feedback, any comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for an interesting talk.
Was, it was also nice to meet like this finally. <laughs> yeah. uh, when is the next one? It's on 22nd of March. March. And it will be yeah. you, Corina, won't you? Yeah. Okay. We'll be talking about space and sound. Yeah. I was happy to be here the first time. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. See Thank you in you. a month. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Good bye. night for everybody. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so